In 2012, I took part in an interview for Great Minds, a program produced by the Educational Broadcasting System in South Korea. It was an engaging opportunity to discuss science, rational inquiry, and the evolutionary perspective on life. What follows is a segment of that conversation. I hope you find it thought-provoking. I'm Richard Dawkins, Emeritus Professor of the Public Understanding of Science at the University of Oxford. My next book, Flights of Fancy, begins with the question, do you, do you like to imagine yourself flying? Or do you dream about flying? And I do. I think most people do have dreams of flying. It's a wonderful feeling to fly up through the trees, over the trees, swooping down. Yes, I, I imagine it. A few years ago, I wrote a children's book called the magic of reality, in which each chapter was began with a question like, what is the sun, what is an earthquake, um, who's the first human, and so on. And I thought it would be fun to write a second edition with a lot more questions. And the first question was about flight, and it grew from a chapter to a whole book. So that's the origin of the book, Flights of Fancy. Flight is such a big subject, and it, it applies not just to animals, which includes insects and pterodactyls, pterosaurs, and bats and birds, but also humans. People like Leonardo da Vinci, who had a dream of flying and who designed flying machines, which would never have worked, but it was an ex example of the, the dream that people have always had. We're, we're too big to fly easily. There are very few flying animals have ever been as big as we are, as being, ever been as heavy as we are. One or two have. There was a giant pterosaur, um, Quetzalcoatlus, which was the size of a small plane. That's the, the largest animal that's ever flown. So we'd have to have huge wings, great big wings. One of the illustrations in the book, Flights of Fancy, is a famous picture by Leonardo da Vinci of the angel Gabriel visiting the Virgin Mary. And in the original picture, the angel's wings are ludicrously too small. So we've redrawn them to be as big as they would need to be in order to lift the angel up in the air. And they're ridiculously big. It'd be very, very hard for us to fly. The best condition to fly is to be small. If you're very small, like a mythical fairy, uh, or a little fly, or a little gnat, gnat or something like that, then it's easy to fly because you just float uh, and your surface area is large compared to your volume and therefore your weight. It's just a simple mathematical truth that for any given shape of an object, if you increase the size of it in proportion, then the, the weight goes up, the volume goes up as the cube of the linear dimension, and the area goes up as the square of the linear dimension. So the other, looking at it the other way around, a very small animal has a very high surface area compared to its, to its weight. So the first condition to be able to fly would be to be small. But if you must be large, then you need to increase your surface area. by having something like wings or something like the patagium, the, me the membrane that I described from the cologo, the flying le lemur or flying squirrels, or convergently, uh, flying marsupials in Australia. And uh, that, that's what you would have to, that the condition for being able to fly would be to have a large surface area. And in order to fly in, in an energetic sort of way, uh, properly fly, you need wings, actual muscular powered wings. Humans have long longed to fly, as I said before, and so I suppose they took inspiration from birds, but the inspiration is in a way misleading because they, would, they saw that birds flap their wings, and so they thought that that was the right way to go, and Leonardo da Vinci tried to design, and did design, flying machines which involve flapping. And it turns out that's not the right way to go because 
muscle power is not enough to keep a creature as heavy as a human aloft. You need an enormous amount of muscle. If you think about the muscle, the breast muscle of a chicken, so a chicken doesn't fly, but it's descended from animals that do. This huge muscle with a great big keel, in order for a human to fly, the keel would would reach from 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 me to, to the camera practically in order to get enough muscle. So flapping flight is not on. What you need to do is go through gliding, where you just use the wings are outstretched and you use thermals. And, and gliders do use thermals, as you know. Um, a thermal is a, is a rising column of hot air, which rises because it's surrounded by cold air, and cold air comes in at the bottom of the column. And so it, the, the hot air rises, and that's what gliders do. And that's what soaring birds like vultures and eagles and storks do. Uh, they, they stretch their wings out. They don't bother to flap if they can help it. And they just glide soaring in the, in the thermal. They sometimes have to go around in circles in order to keep in the thermal. So they're going up in a kind of spiral. Now that's a sensible way to do it. And, and hang gliders do that. And some of Leonardo's designs were indeed gliders, and they probably would have worked, but his flapping designs wouldn't have worked. Uh, when you want to fly without a thermal or without any kind of updraft, you then have to provide some kind of forward propulsion. And that's what planes do. They, they have engines which, which thrust them forward at great speed. And then moving fast forwards produces a, a great wind over the wings, and that produces lift in two different ways. There's the Newtonian way, which is that the, the wing is slightly inclined upwards like that, and so when the wind hits it, it pushes it upwards. And you can feel this if you're driving along in a car, you lean your arm out like that and tilt your hand up, and it, it, it's pushed upwards. That's the Newtonian way, which is the most important way in which planes get lift. But there's also Bernoulli's principle, which is harder to explain. And because of the way the wings are curved, the, the wind travels faster over the top of the wing than it does over the underside of the wing. And by Bernoulli's principle, that causes a kind of suction effect or pressure on the underside of the wing, pushing the wing upwards. So that's how you work with a fixed wing, like a plane does. The bird doesn't have a fixed wing. It has a mobile wing. It's partly propelling the bird forwards, which gives lift by means of both the Newtonian and the Bernoulli principle. It's also because the bird is flapping like that, and because the, the wings are drawn inwards on the upstroke and then out again on the downstroke, inwards on the upstroke, down and down, out of the downstroke, that provides lift on the helicopter principle. So it's a combination of different physical principles that enables a bird to fly, or a bat to fly, or a pterosaur to fly. Insects are a bit different. Insects fly in, in, a, in a rather different way. They don't have, I mean, they, 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 the wings do go up and down in a rather complicated way, but um, it's all done without uh, muscles that specifically pull the, mostly to pull the wing down or up. It's done by deformation of the thorax. It's just an outgrowth, the wings are an outgrowth of the thorax, and they, the thorax is deformed by muscles, and that causes the wings to go. Uh, most insects fly by having a, an oscillatory muscle, a muscle which vibrates in a kind of shiver. So unlike a bird, which has, where the brain says, down, up, down, up, and that's what locusts do as well. But most insects don't do that. They have a motor an oscillatory vibrating motor which just goes on or off. It says, the, the brain says switch on and then the motor starts buzzing or switch off and then the motor stops buzzing. So that's how insects fly. We wouldn't have wings if we couldn't fly. I mean, there are, there are animals that don't really have wings but can glide. I suppose the most we could hope for would be that. There are animals in the, the forests of Southeast Asia 
which um, and they don't properly fly, but things like the Kalugo flying lemur, which has a membrane stretching from the from the hands to the feet, and it can glide from a tree to a near, to a neighboring tree, and it can glide maybe 100 meters. One of the puzzling things, in a way, is why animals that ha that once flew have given it up, and there are an awful lot of animals that used to fly, or their ancestors used to fly, and they no longer do. So things like ostriches and emus, this family of birds called ratites, um, which um, obviously to say they've got wings, they've got stubs of wings. So they, they used to fly, their ancestors used to fly. Moas, the giant ratite birds of New Zealand, lost their wings totally. There's no trace of a wing, no, not even a skeletal stub of a wing, unlike an ostrich, which, do has, which does have wings, which are much too small to fly. Dodos must have flown to get to Mauritius where they live. Their ancestors must have, because they no longer needed them. They no longer had to worry about predators. There were no predators on the island of Mauritius. So they didn't need to escape from predators. Dozens, literally dozens of different species of bird that moved to islands on, on wings and then, and then lost them. Uh, another example of a, a beautiful example of, of losing wings is provided by social insects. Ants, the, the ants that you see don't have wings, they're worker ants, they just run around. But queen ants do have wings. And queen ants are what the whole enterprise of an ant's nest is all about, is producing queens and males which also have wings. They have wings, they fly out of the nest, they mate on the wing, and then the queen settles down and digs a hole to make a new nest, and then bites off her own wings. which is a dramatic illustration of the uselessness of wings. Wings are not a wholly good thing to have. If they were, why on earth would a queen ant literally bite her own wings off or pull her own wings off with her, with her legs? So wings are a nuisance if you don't actually need to fly. Worker ants are just simply female ants. They could have been queens if they'd been fed differently. But they don't develop wings. They have it, all the genetic equipment to develop wings, but they just don't do it. Queens do have it too. They do develop wings and then they positively bite them off or pull them off when they settle down underground. Wings are a nuisance unless you need to fly. They're a nuisance underground. That's why workers don't have it. And that's why queens bite them off. So there are numerous examples of animals that, whose ancestors used to have wings, no longer do. Ants are a special case because not only their remote ancestors used to have wings, their parents, their own father and mother, both had wings.